opponents in 2021. Time to focus on Arizona State, and we're joined by Sun Devil assistant head coach and special teams coordinator Sean Slocum, who joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Sean, thank you so much for taking a few minutes. We appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. So now, Sean, uh, in doing my research, I wanted to find out if you had ever had any previous experience against BYU. And correct me if I'm wrong, when BYU, or when BYU hosts uh, Arizona State on September 18th, that will not be your first trip to Provo. You were with Texas A&M in 1996 when the Aggies came into town and BYU won that season opener 41-37. Do you re what do you remember from that game? Well, I just remember it being an explosive game. It was back and forth. And, uh, you know, I think at the end of the game, uh, Steve Sarkeesian was playing really well, and, and uh, we couldn't finish. I think the altitude and the, and the sun that day was just beaming down on us, and uh, it was a rough, rough, rough day for us. Well, before we get into specifics about your team, let's talk generally. Um, sun Devils. They're getting a lot of preseason hype. Everybody's talking about them, considered to be by most a preseason top 25 team. Um, in general, how are you feeling about this 2021 version of the Sun Devil football team right now? Well, I think our team, uh, this really goes back to last season and our unfortunate season that we were only able to, to uh, play four games. We practiced forever. We started practicing in July, played our first game November the 27th. And, and had some ups and downs, but felt good, finished the way we finished. And then having all of our, just about all of our players returning, I think it gives us a chance to, to uh, be, be a good football team this year. You know, Sean, a, a lot of people on the outside looking in believe that under coach Herm Edwards, that this is Arizona State's best chance to win the Pac-12 championship. Do you think that's accurate? Do you think this is the the best team that that Coach Edwards has had? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, without a doubt, you know, we've got a, a, a quarterback that's got some experience and he's a, a dynamic playmaker. We've got an experienced offensive line. We've got some skill guys that came in here last year that have proven to be impactful. And he turned around on defense. We've got an extremely experienced and talented secondary. And a number of those guys will play on Sundays. And then, um, again, experienced linebacker core. And, and uh, our challenge, our defensive line will be, will need to play well for us. And, and uh, they're, they're very well coached. And so we're looking forward to putting this whole thing together. Coach, you mentioned uh, your quarterback, Jaden Daniels. He's back for year three. Such a dynamic uh, player that, that just changes the game single-handedly. Uh, where do you hope to see the biggest improvement with him now coming into year three? Well, I think just the natural maturation process of just, you know, reading defenses and, and seeing a big picture and, and probably game management. You know, that's something that, that you have to learn through experience. And, and, and I think he will be, be better in those areas. Well, and in terms of it doesn't all fall on Jaden Daniels shoulders either. When you look on just on the offensive side of the football, you guys bringing back an unbelievable ground game. I know that you guys view the receivers as an improved group. How much can just those two positions help a guy like Jaden as this season gets underway? Well, it helps tremendously because in a series, if we're running the ball, it doesn't doesn't all fall on Jaden's shoulders to to make plays and we hand the ball off and block well and run the football it uh it burns time on the clock it scores points and it takes some of the pressure off the quarterback then you turn around and hopefully make some plays in the passing game and defensively you mentioned that that, that you got a lot of folks coming back uh, most of the guys that led that uh, uh the pac 12 in points allowed last season most takeaways per game last season how much confidence do you have in that group on the defensive side of the ball I've got a lot of a lot of confidence. I think it starts with Antonio Pierce and and taking over the reins from Marvin Lewis. And uh, the spring this spring really uh, showed us we got a chance to be be an impactful defense. And then I think if you look at our secondary again, experience there because that's your last line of defense. I, I I think we'll be we'll be good as a result. You know, how do you view the Pac-12 this year? You know, everybody was talking about, you know, last year it was is just not what everybody had expected. And obviously last year just had its own set of circumstances that nobody can can even, you know, foretell. 
When you look at the Pac-12 this year, what stands out to you? How good do you think this conference as a whole can be? You know, I think the conference can be a solid conference in, in, in terms of Power Five. Um, no one got to, got to play an entire season. And it's just, I think everybody felt a little bit unfulfilled. And uh, a lot of players are returning. And I think uh, there will be a lot of focus within each team um, to, to be as good as they possibly can be. And I, I think it'll be an exciting football season. You know, Coach, we talked a little bit about offense. We talked defense. But now we, we got to talk about what's most dear to your heart because not only are you the assistant head coach, but you're responsible for coordinating the special teams. And it's such a big part of the game. You've got a great punter coming back. Um, you've got a good returner and Taylor back. Talk, talk to us a little bit about that special teams group and what the strength is and what you expect out of them this season. Well, we've got good uh, position players, as you mentioned, in the punter, the returner. I think our kicking position will be – will be good. It may be inexperienced, but I think it'll be talented. Um, but, you know, Coach Edwards creates an environment here where we can be good on special teams. We were conscious with the number of plays and individual players play, but we play our best players on special teams. And, and as a result, it's, it's allowed us to be impactful in, in, during ball games. For those that may not know, um, your dad is R.C. Slocum, the legendary head coach at Texas A&M for many, many years. And this may not necessarily be an easy question to answer, but as you look at your coaching career, where do you feel like your dad has had the biggest influence on how you coach today? I, really in two areas. I think, first of all, in dealing with players, he taught me that that respect going both directions was probably the number one thing, and and to treat players the, with with respect and dignity, and you know hold them to a high expectation and be demanding on them, but at the same time treat them like young men and, and college students and guys that are growing. The second area, <laughs> I'll never forget. I my my place was at the end of our staff table, looking directly at him, and and uh, everything that I said he challenged. So it taught me to think about what I was going to say before I said it. And uh, I think those things have helped me a lot in my career. I think, Coach, I think all of us could, uh, <laughs> right. for that second one, we, lessons, could all, yes. we could all learn from, right? <laughs> to think about what we're going to say right. before, before we say it. Um, your thoughts a little bit. You know, you've, you've got a, a tough Pac-12 schedule like it is every year. That's, that's, that's running the gauntlet every year in that conference. But not, now you've got BYU as a non-conference opponent. Your thoughts on BYU as we approach this upcoming season? Well, uh, the ultimate respect. They've always been a physical football team. They're very well coached, and they've always been able to throw the ball and be explosive in the, in the passing game. It'll be a very tough game, particularly playing at their home, and uh, it, it's, it's going to be all we can handle. Coach, we, we've talked a lot about uh, the positives with your team, and there's obviously a lot of them, a lot of things to be really excited about with the Sun Devil program. What is you and granted we're in June, so there's still plenty of time before the season kicks off. What's the biggest question mark for you guys as a coaching staff right now heading into the year? I think just being able to play with continuity, being being playing well on a consistent basis and uh, performing at a, at a level each week that we gives us an opportunity to win a ball game. You know, coach, we were uh, we we're talking right before we hit the air about we've, we've got crazy temperatures up here. Uh, how are the kids dealing? You're supposed to be like 117 to 120 this week down there. How do you even get workouts in? Can the kids even go outside or are they just stuck indoors right now? Well, no, they, they can, they work out outside. Uh, you know, when they're lifting weights, they're indoors, but we, we work out primarily in the mornings and before the temperature rises to that level. So it's, it's bearable, and uh, we're able to get good work in before lunchtime. Talking with Sean Slocum, assistant head coach and special teams coordinator with Arizona State. Coach, thank you so much for taking a few minutes. We really do appreciate it, and uh, we will see you in Provo coming up on the 18th of September. Thank you. You're welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank we, you, Sean. There we go. Sean Slocum on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. Yeah, we thought we were going to get a little bit of sympathy because we're supposed to hit like 104 yeah, this week. Like, yeah, that's